I'm showing you how to get Cookie Client for 1.12.2. To get Cookie Client, you want to head over to their official GitHub page, which is going to be linked down in the description, together actually with my Discord server, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you could join that. Anyways, here you want to look for the one that says latest, and then under the assets page right over there, you want to click on the jar file, and that will automatically download it. Now, as you can see, we have Cookie Client in our downloads over here, but we do actually need Forge for 1.12.2 to be able to use it. If you don't have it or you're not sure how to get it, then I will link that down in the description below. Anyways, with this in our downloads, we can press on Windows and R at the same time. In the run box that pops up, type in a percentage sign, app, data, and then another percentage sign just like so. Then hit Enter or click OK and you should end up in this folder or this folder right over here either way you want to make sure you go into the folder called roaming and there going to the dot micro folder you might need to scroll down a little until you find the mods folder over here basically what you want to do is just drag the client right over there into the mods folder just like so once you've done that you can close both of these up and open up the minecraft launcher in here, just make sure that you have Forge selected for 1.12.2, and then we can play. So here in Minecraft, I'll briefly show you how to use this client. So you'll immediately notice some stuff on your screen over here, some useful th just things displaying information, as well as a cookie client watermark. You should have also received some messages in chat, as you can see. You can open up the GUI by typing plus plus, and then GUI in the chat like so. What that's going to do is open up this part right over here. What we have right here is basically the click GUI, and as you can see, you can click on these to enable them, and click on them once again to disable them. If you hover above them, you'll get a brief description, as well as it telling you that you can right-click on them to extend them. As you can see, if I right-click on this, I'll get a little bit of a customization menu. Some of them have more customization than others. As you can see, I'm finding a bunch with little customization. Anyways, this one, the GUI one over here, um, has a lot of customization, as you can see. There we go. I'll move this right over here for right now. Basically, the GUI one is somewhat the biggest one. And basically, this section over here allows you to edit the general settings of the GUI which is all of this area, right? Um, the HUD, as you can see, is enabled by default. If you click on it to disable it, as you can see, all this stuff will disappear from your screen. I can also right click on that and that is going to choose what to and what to not actually show up on your screen. Some of the most common ones are the array list, which allows you to well show the extended toggled modules. I don't need to explain this um, if you hover above them you'll get a description. So anyways, um, moving on over here in the GUI section, you'll notice the prefix. You can actually customize that as well. So if you click on this, I can make it plus plus P or just a single plus if I wish to do so. Um, the keybind purple one right over here, I can click on that and that allows me to set a general keybind for the GUI. I can, for example, set that to right shift because that is what a lot of clients use. Now, if I close out of there by pressing on escape, I can press on right shift to open it up, which, of course, is pretty useful. You can, of course, once again, set that to anything you want. Here we have the HUD editor, which also is a pretty big one. As you can see, we have a few things showing up on our screen right now. We can customize it to be more. If we click on the HUD editor, then we can, as you can see, move around all of these modules and place them um, somewhere different or drag them off the screen like that, try to hide them. Of course, you can also just disable them through the general settings. Basically, here we have all the stuff that can show up on your screen that you currently have enabled. Anyways, you can once again press on escape to close out of that. That was basically the click GUI, but that isn't actually all yet. So let's take a look at this prefix again. I just reset it to the default, as you can see, which is plus plus. You can set that to whatever you want for convenience. But if I open up the chat and then type in plus plus help, just like so, then I'll get a little bit of a list of all of the commands that we have. For, as you can see, for example, plus plus GUI, what we saw earlier, opens up the GUI, as well as some other commands listed over here. And 
a cookie client explaining that there's also more commands that are explained in the module description if it has a command. So I'll show you that right now. We can open up the click GUI again. So let's take the x-ray for example. I happen to know that we have a command for that. As you can see, if I hover above this, um, you see that we have some extra information and then it says you can add a block with x-ray add ID and then delete a block with x-ray remove and then of course the ID of the block and it says that you need to send that as a command in chat so of course using the prefix that we have over here. There's a few more utilities that also use that same well use func use commands to add or remove or edit functions of the utility. So a few utilities that are used really often are Scaffold, X-Ray, Zoom, uh, the free cam definitely is, Flight is used a lot as well, AutoEat I know a lot of people use as well as Killora of course. Anyways, basically I suppose that was kind of that. If you do have any more questions or stuff like that, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. And for right now, thank you ever so much for watching and I do hope to see you again in the next one. Bye bye.